Hey there traders, Christian Promerts, Tribeca Trade Group with your end of day recap for Wednesday and uh, a little bit of a later video today. I kind of got, um, had, a, had a couple things that I had to take care of, but um, so here we go. So we'll do a quick video for today. You know, not much really going on in the averages. They continue to grind higher. We've got what now, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five straight days of increases. And we are now over that Wednesday uh, recap as just as I was uh, talking to somebody who was not in trading last week when they said after the big, uh, the big down day, uh, they asked me kind of what my opinion was. And I said, uh, you know, I said we were really overbought a couple couple different things. A couple sectors really got overbought. So we were in need of, um, you know, whatever the excuse was or whatever the, the, the reason that people thought it was. Uh, you know, I think we were due for a decent sell-off day. So right back a week later and um, we're through that. Uh, we're back to where we were basically Tuesday. We almost reached a, a new high today. So um, really some nice, some nice progress made. Not much to really talk about in terms of, of the indices. The one thing I would say is, hey, we had this bearish bearish crossover MACD. Um, now it's a bullish one, it looks like. So watch for another, make sure we this is a true crossover. Sometimes it takes a day to kind of confirm that. But, um, you know, if you're in a futures trader, I, I don't know how you're what how you're making money in this market. There really just is not enough to really trade to be an index trader. And the volatility isn't there either. Um, where we're making our money is in stock trading right now. The stock trading opportunities are just phenomenal if you're posi if you position yourself right now. Uh, I've I've just not, haven't seen it like this in the la last couple of months where just stock picking has been really good. You know, we, we follow aggressive call activity for trade ideas, and some of the trade ideas that we've been given on a daily basis uh, have just really been working out very well. So. If you're an index trader, again, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody, but I don't know why people, I, I talked to somebody a couple weeks ago who was trading futures and they're like, I'm having a really difficult time. I'm like, no shit. Um, sorry, excuse my French, but uh, you know, to try to make money trading futures, uh, people think, I guess, that they're, they're easy to trade. There's a very, the liquidity is really good, but first of all, A, there's no volatility and B, um, you can't predict something. I know a lot of people have indicators all over their screens. Nothing is going to tell you when somebody has $50 million to, to just dump on the market and be done. Um, so I am not an advocate of that. I know how to trade futures. I used to trade them professionally for a number of years uh, back in my institutional trading days. If you're trying to do that, uh, you know... I have no idea why <laughs> you would want to do that. Um, IWM, I think, is really the index to, to keep an eye on here. Uh, it's real, We're at the top of value. We kind of got rejected there at the top of value. So while, while NASDAQ, go back to NASDAQ futures for a minute. NASDAQ made it another new high today. Um, NASDAQ and S&P looking pretty good. What's not looking good is small caps, and, I, and I'm, I'm a bit worried about them. Um, if you are looking for a hedge right now, which I think is suitable to look for, because the VIX is all the way back down to a 10, what does that mean in terms of how options are priced? They're cheap. So index protection is extremely cheap. I say this all the time. When the VIX is around 10 or 11, great time to put on a little bit of insurance, especially if you're like me. My book right now is basically all longs. I don't really have any puts on, but I will be looking to put something on uh, in front of the long weekend, possibly, you know, something cheap, probably a put spread on in, in IWM, because I see IWM being the most vulnerable right now. It doesn't look as nearly as, as healthy as some of the others. But I want to get off the, the major indices because I want to talk about sectors and I want to talk about what happened today. Um, a lot of really good signals today. First one out of the gate was Cypress Semi. Um, so here's why it's much more advantageous, I think, to be a stock trader. You know, from beginning of the day to, to the end, a six and a half percent move in, in Cypress Semi today. So this was a position that we put on and I'll kind of bring you um, into what we, some of the trades that we took. You know, I got into these for the September Cypress calls for 82 cents and took targets today all the way up to, sorry, that's the wrong uh, price on there, um, up to $1.10. This should read $1.10 in here. So, you know, from $0.82 cents to $1.10, so a couple other trades that we took today, MSCC, which we saw some call buying. Uh, you know, I've been talking about how I really have not liked the financials for the last couple of weeks. Starting to see, the first thing that I saw yesterday was Goldman. Uh, Goldman, we saw some some really nice call activity, some some calls that were purchased out in 
uh, out in, sorry, I can't zoom out here for some reason, out in September. And look at the look at the bounce that we got on the 200-day moving average. So this was a huge winner in, in the trading room. And, um, you know, th that's the kind of things that, that, we're, that we're looking to identify. Something, a space where I really did not want to be in at all. And... Um, Saw, saw, looked at the chart, looked at the, the, the activity and said, hey, this is a really good signal. And I've got my defined support or risk um, of where I, where I think the trade would not be working. So I, put, I even put on a call spread. I did not go into the September calls that were on the tape. I said, there's no reason to go out that far. I put on a 225 and a half, 230 call spread for, for 213. Right at the end of the day yesterday, I uh, hit a target for 330. I mean, that's, you know, phenomenal. Um, out of MRVL, uh, this was a trade that we saw a couple weeks ago for $1.50, paid $0.91. Uh, Western Digital put, got into that trade just uh, on Monday, out for, for um, $1.60. Um, $1.60 paid 125 so nice profits there. Micron, um, been holding on to, actually hit a target at 350 today. Uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about the consumer staples, but something, something's definitely going on in the, in the consumer staples. A lot of option activity in those names, but um, you could see all of our exits today. Uh, a lot of exits taken and, um, and, and, and a lot of profits today. Um, up, my portfolio was up about $4,000 today. So um, these were the new trades that I took today. This is uh, Citigroup was, is another trade. Citigroup looks why I've been talking about Citigroup for the last couple of days because it's it's up near a 52 week high. Much different looking than some of the other um, some some of the other banks. I like to take names that look that are outperforming versus their peers, and it looks like Citigroup is doing just that. So Citigroup and Goldman. Um, two financials that I really have, again, haven't been in the financials, thought they look horrible, but, um, you know, a couple nice trades on the tape uh, that we've seen is the repeat call buying in Citigroup and the Goldman Sachs as well. Um, semis have just been un unbelievable. You know, semis, you look at the whole group and I think it was just up about 30 or 40 basis points, but um, you kind of look to see what was going on within the group. And you look at the movers here, and we kind of caught all of these names today. This was the MSCC that we took that we put on today. Um, I don't see Cyprus in here, but Cyprus was the better performer out of all, all these. I guess it's not in the SMH ETF. Um, maybe it's in the SOX ETF. Uh, and I need movers. Yeah, there we go. Six and a half percent. Boom. That was our trade today. Um, MRVL, also our trade. Um, very nice today. There was also some IDTI that also traded today, um, but it looks like the names that we were in were the outperformers. So that's the beauty of stock, uh, stop, excuse me, stock selection, which is what we've done very, very nicely and very, very precisely. Um, other trades today, a whole lot of energy trades. Um, this Oasis, holy cow, did this thing get tagged today? Um, these are very high speculative oil plays. So what do we have tomorrow? We have an OPEC meeting. So we actually structured a, a strangle around, um, which you have to be a member of the Tribeca Trade Group, but we actually have an OPEC trade on right now, um, which will profit if, if, if oil goes up or if it goes down. But man, there was a whole lot of activity in the very high speculative. It doesn't get much more speculative than, than OAS. And man, they really went after um, a lot of calls, 8,000 sweep, 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 sweep. Uh, there's actually a little bit of puts that went up too, but look at these sweeps that went up in, uh, in OAS. Um, and then we saw this as well in, in a few other energy names, S very similar uh, type of names, LNG, Devon, Neighbors, and I think I have a couple other on the list as well, but there's about five or six different energy names, really high speculative stuff uh, going on for OPEC tomorrow. So I didn't take the majority of those trades. It's just not where, it's just not my game to kind of speculate on what OPEC is going to do. I have a trade, um, one trade on that's designed for um, volatility around that situation tomorrow, which which is what we get. Pepsi, um, my goodness, uh, 20,000 calls traded all aggressively in Pepsi. Um, two blocks of 10, basically 10,000, one after another. So we took that trade as well in Pepsi. Uh, these are the SEP 125 calls. And it's been basically every day or every other day where we're seeing call buying in one of the consumer staples names. It's been, it's been Colgate, CL. It's been um, Coca-Cola was a cup was two weeks ago. Uh, what else? 
Kraft Heinz, which started to work today as well, which I have a Kraft Heinz order on from a couple weeks ago. So Kraft Heinz is starting to break out. A couple weeks ago, these, these stocks looked horrible. Uh, you know, but they were around the 200-day moving average. They were kind of breaking through. Uh, General Mills, which I think got downgraded after the close. General Mills is still way under the 200-day moving average. Um, I think Conagra is one that just got over the 200-day. So, you know, these names are all picking up and seeing call activity. I don't know why. I don't know if somebody's speculating on a big deal and they're buying the whole group and maybe thinking that they get lucky or maybe they know something out of one of them and they're just buying all of them just to just to be... Uh, sp spread their chips around and maybe not make it look obvious. Who knows? Just completely speculating here. But we are seeing a big pickup in consumer staples, uh, the packaged good and packaged goods and beverages, where a lot of calls have been going up the last two weeks. Uh, a couple other trades that uh, I'm already at 10 minutes. I see this video, but a couple other trades that um, were caught my eye was short dated calls going up in biotech. A couple different biotech names. One name that has my um, that I did not put a trade on because I just can't put a trade on it in, in everything. Uh, but I just, it was one of those days today where you just saw a lot of different uh, things that looked appealing to me. Celgene, uh, I know I've got a lot of indicators on my charts, but the white line is the 200 day moving average. Look at the bounce on the 200 day moving average. So I like this trade. It, it uh, was up just slightly today, but look at the hammer bar right on the 200. And then um, follow through yesterday, and then um, not too much follow through, I guess, today. But you got again, I like where you have defined support. So if you want to put a trade on in Celgene, um, I would say go long against that 200 day moving average. If it happens to break, uh, you can get out pretty quickly. A couple other trades VMC was another one, um, just a colossal trade. This name's a little bit uh, above the 200 day moving average. We'll kind of look at this um, over here so it's not so busy. Um, yeah, so all above the, just barely above the 200 day moving average, not a lot of momentum that I see here, but I'll show you the trade and you can kind of take, uh, take a look at this for yourselves. Three, 3,400 of the August 125 calls purchased for 640. That is a huge trade. That's a $2.2 million trade in VMC. Keep an eye on that name. Vulcan Materials, a uh, huge trade going up there. Another trade that caught my eye was Summit. This is a name that uh, we haven't seen call activity in a while, but again, has been kind of grinding higher. This is more of a materials name. Uh, you could see there was a total of 4,000 of these calls that were traded, August calls. So, you know, I had to put all the call activity. Uh, usually I have it just on one, you know, there's about 15 or 20 signals. Um, I don't, I didn't even put the puts up here because there was just too many, too much activity in terms of calls. Uh, one chart I didn't check today was PBR, which I know PBR kind of sold off pretty decently, uh, way below the 200, 200 day moving average, but it seems like there's been some call buying. Uh, EWS, uh, D E W Z S, which is small cap Brazil. Uh, this one I'll give the credit or hat tip to, um, L L M T nine, seven, eight on Twitter. Really nice call out here. Uh, the small cap Brazil, again, want to take a shot versus the 200 day moving average, um, nice bounce off of it. So here was the big sell off for Brazil and it's been holding pretty tight here. I would like this trade, the, the small caps. And I put this trade on in cash today better than the um, the big names in Brazil because they're still it's still underneath the 200 day moving average it's making some nice progress uh, since since the fallout here last week but um, uh, it looks like it's hitting it's going to be hitting resistance here the 200 day moving average so I like the other way I like the small caps a little bit better so uh, that's I think where I want to leave it for today but again just really nice day in in the trading room. Uh, while the indices are basically just um, chugging up slowly higher, it's really the single stocks which have been uh, have had some really nice opportunities and uh, and a lot of separation between sectors. So um, it's I think this is really where it's out. It continues to be a stock pickers market, and uh, and and we're having a great time uh, trading here at Tribeca Trade Group. So uh, check us out. I do have a link available. Uh, I'm not going to show it. You have to you have to reach me personally, which you could do that on Twitter or by email, cfromhertz at gmail.com. And I can give you a, a week free of the trading room so you can check it out. Um, it does cost me money to kind of give the, the trial out because we use Slack and I get charged um, in this system. 
to be perfectly honest, but um, I'm willing for you guys to come and check it out for free for a week because I think that what we've got here is um, is nobody else is doing right now. So um, check us out, TribecaTradeGroup.com, and have a great evening. Thanks, everybody.